And hello once more, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode 14 of A Druid's Dozen. My name's John, I'm uh, also known in various circles as the Rock Druid, and I'm a uh, radio DJ, I present a couple of shows on the radio. There's the uh, Sunday Rock Show on uh, BCFM Radio in the Bristol UK, which is syndicated worldwide via the, Astro, uh, via the Rock Radio Network. And uh, I'm also uh, the Rock, do the Rock Druid Show on the uh, Astro Radio dot Earth. So, um, I've been doing DJing for many years, built up a huge record collection, and uh, yeah, and also basically what I do, I sit in front of the camera, I wave an album or two in front of you, and we talk about it. So, without further ado, let's dive straight into uh, this week's randomly selected dozen. Kicking off with a bit of vinyl as always, and we'll have this one. ACDC flick of a switch. There's the front. There's the back. And I don't think there's anything in here. Oh, well, there is. He says getting his glasses. Yeah, just there, just very, very faintly printed album credits. Forgotten all about that, you know? Right. So, flick of a switch by ACDC. Came out 1983. Um... The third album to, fit, uh, to feature uh, Brian Johnson on vocals after the death of uh, Mal um, Bon Scott. Good grief, memories fading all over the place today. And a bit of a divisive album amongst ACDC fans. Some people don't like it, put it that way. I'm at a loss to see why, because overall, you know, it's an album I've got a soft spot for. I mean, yeah, it's not their strongest, it's not back in black uh, for a start, um, but, you know, when you look down the track list then, you've got tracks like Guns For Hire, which was the uh, single off it, which is a damn fine track, Nervous Shakedown, um, which I believe was that a single as well, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, you know, Deep In The Hole, Badlands, Brain Shake, um, Flick Of A Switch Itself, you know, the songs are pretty good. Yeah, they I mean like they like, may not be quite as strong as some of their other material overall, but uh, it's not the blow up your video album, which is an album I can't stand. That's the one ACDC album I don't like. But um Yeah, overall it's quite good. Um You know, ACDC are one of these bands but they uh, tend to do what it says on the tin, you know roughly what you're going to get with an ACDC album and yeah you can accuse them of just rehashing the same formula over and over again but hey if it, if it works and it keeps it interesting um then you know more power to your elbow you know and people who don't like it aren't forced to go and buy it are they so uh yeah um overall you know if I was going to give it a, a number I don't normally give these things numbers but I'll give it a solid 7 out of 10 and uh you know, continue to enjoy it whilst uh, the gainsayers can go ahead and not enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, ACDC, flick of a switch. It's pretty good. Okay, going to reach for some CDs next, or CD next. And we're having this one. There's the front. There is the back. Now, this is Two As You Need by Bristol Indie Rockers Discount Columbo. <coughs> it's part of a uh, trilogy. I think it's three. It might be a trilogy. It may even be a fourth uh, CD set they did. Um, basically, rather than record an entire album and release it, they 
brought out a string of three, maybe four, kind of interrelated EPs that kind of um, summed up, you know, became the album if you bought if you put more together. Now I know I've got at least three of these. I'm not sure if I've got the complete set. Well, maybe I have got the complete set. There's only three, but anyway, I digress. Um, and then overall, it's pretty good if you like kind of. These guys, the female front here, it's a Bristol-based um, sort of indie rock act. Uh, and probably a bit more indie than rock. Uh, they're, they're kind of children that grew up whose parents were into Britpop, put it that way. And the consequence, the, well, I've interviewed these guys on the radio a couple of times, and they said that, you know, growing up in a household where mum and dad are playing Blur, Blur and Pulp and Space is going to rub off on you. And, uh, you know, and I can see there are kind of uh, shades of Britpop on here. Tracks that, uh, in places, they're a bit blur, they're a bit knicky in places. Um, you know, there's a, there's a big supergrass vibe running through their sound. But, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, um, I don't dismiss all Britpop out of hand. I have a few albums in my collection, which will probably show up on one of these videos one day. And, um... Yeah, and not only that, kind of looking back at that kind of era and, and to find a modern band influenced by that kind of era is maybe a little bit unusual. Because, you know, these, these kids are only, well, I say kids, they're late teens, early 20s. So, uh, well, they were when this came out a year or two back. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is uh, it's pretty good. The track listening on here is uh, Irish Girl, is probably my favourite cut on here, which is a nice kind of... Uh, slow indie rocker oh me oh my oh no right here this time hear me now that's the complete track listing um everyone's a kind of quite nicely converted kind of a uh, bit of brit pop revivalism and uh yeah now this band are still available they're still going uh, they were at least weren't to a lockdown cutting and um you know they gig around the bristol area fairly regular they do spread their wings to other parts of the country from time to time so if you find them in your area um go check them out and also look up their stuff online as well uh these eps are pretty good and i'm not sure uh what the current state of releasing is from uh, discount colombo but um i'm no doubt a google will tell you more yeah uh as you need number two but number two as you need by discount colombo good stuff Okay, next up, having a bit of uh, new over British heavy metal. We've got a couple of doses on this week's show, and uh, we have that. There's the front. It is, of course, uh, Rock Goddess's eponymous debut album from 81, 82. We'll have to have a look in a minute. There's the front. There's the back. Don't think there's any inserts or inner sleeves or anything on here. Nineteen eighty three, I knew it was somewhere around there. Um <coughs> now what can I tell you about Rock Goddess? Three piece band are, are out of North, North London, I believe. Um, formed by two sisters. That's, uh, let's have a look. Jodie Turner there, who was about 19 at the time, uh, on uh, guitar and vocals. And um, that was uh, Judy Turner, her sister. Who was about 15 when this album came out um, and then there's uh, Tracy Lamb the bass player probably best known for later working with girls school although you know she's I think she's back with rock goddess now but anyway um, probably the second best known all-female band of the new over British heavy metal like I said this lot came out of London two sisters Jodie and Jodie and Julie and um, with an old schoolmate and uh, yeah, you know, that was like classic 
three piece kind of um, female motorhead type approach and line up but there again girls got quite moat ready in places as well weren't they but yeah they, these guys they're just in your face classic power trio no nonsense heads down rock and roll um, looking at the track listing uh, they, they've already had, they already had a couple of sort of like I don't know if they actually charted, but I know they were quite popular on radio and in the rock clubs at the time. Tracks like um, Satisfied and Crucified, Heavy Metal, Rock and Roll. A couple of uh, singles that came out of this. And I think there was another one. Is it Back to... Oh, My Angel. Sorry, was another one. Um, but, you know, overall, this is album's pretty good. If I was going to pick a side, it would have to be side two, because that's got My Angel, my favourite rock goddess track, Satisfied and Crucified, Start Running, Make My Night, One, one Away Love, Heavy Metal Rock and Roll. Um, yeah, it, it's all, but yeah, the A-side's pretty damn good. You've got Heartache, Back to You, Love Still Lingers, Betrayed, Take Your Love Away. You know, it's all killer, no filler, straight down the line. Yeah, boogie metal not boogie yeah heavy metal sort of thing um they did another album after this the rather good hell hath no fury then there was a bit of a lineup change this is well after tracy lamb went off to uh um rock, uh, to girl school and then um there was a third album came out uh but i think it only got a french or spanish release it never got official because they'd lost their uk deal but still managed to hang on to the indie label that was released in the indie parts of Europe. Um, then broke up, reformed a few years ago. Uh, I can't remember the name of the album, but they did a cracking album came out about, about last year. And uh, back gigging and touring and all that now. I think with the original lineup. So, um, yeah, Rock Goddess, their debut album from 1983. Um, bit of a classic, if you ask me. Go get it. Okay, next up, we'll have this one. There's the front. There is the back. Disc like that inside. Whip this out, you've just got a, it's only a basic folded sleeve because this was a quite a independent local release when it came out. There's the front, and there's the inner sleeve of the gatefold, just some band pictures and the, cre and the credits. This is Homosexual Love Ballads by The Babies 3. <coughs> Now, Babies 3, Bad Out of Kent in the UK. Um, I want to say there's a uh, sitting born. I may be wrong, but I know it's not North Kent. Um, this album was recorded at a studio in Margate uh, on, uh, on the Isle of Thanet, if you know your UK geography. That's the bit that sticks out on the end of Kent heading east. But anyway, um, sort of four or five piece. How many of them are there? Let's have a quick look again because I've forgotten. Yeah, five piece kind of young, snotty, in your face kind of, and not giving a shit punk punk band. Um, hard to kind of categorise them where they fit into the punk spectrum. There's, you know, in places they're a bit emo, in places they're a bit kind of old school, almost like Clash type punk. There's elements of kind of your Green Day, kind of Blink 182s in here. Um, and I've got to admit, this album comes over as a bit patchy. Um, it's almost as if they can't quite decide what they want to do, but they're having a lot of fun experimenting with their musicality, you know. And, uh, you know, might be experimenting with their sexuality, you know. Homosexual love ballads is a pretty evocative name for your for your debut album i think this was their debut anyway um 
but overall it hangs together quite well considering it does kind of bounce between subgenres quite a lot um, some classic cuts on there enemy is the enemy which is basically attacking a uh, one of Britain's leading uh, music publications and we just cause a hasten to add enemy is a terrible kind of uh, build them up and shoot them down um, we're always the latest trend and if you're not on the latest trend you're bullshit kind of attitude um, you know I used to say in the I say in the UK if enemy give you a headline uh, kind of uh, feature one week within three weeks you're gonna be slagged off in the gossip columns and then forgotten about forever so uh, yeah it's a way of the music press and enemy are kind of one of the worst uh, worst offenders but anyway, um, you got that one. You got my favourite cut on here. This punk's gone wrong, which is about people slagging him off for listening to Green. You know, there it's go something about I've been caught listening to Green Day and my friends don't uh, don't want to know me and me t-shirts the right of the wrong band and me jeans are the wrong fit, etc. It's about Poe. It's, it's it's a slag off song that Poe's punk, but delivered in a fantastic kind of dour almost like seemingly depressive emo kind of uh, kind of vibe um uh yeah you got then you got tracks like no and vacant lot and uh rumble fish that are kind of more up up tempo old school punkers i was pretty good um i've got to thank my missus for getting me into this lot um she was a uh, well get me into this album at least because this is i know they've got a few others out but this is the only one i've actually I've actually got to listen to their stuff can be quite obscure to get your hands on <coughs> yeah when i first started seeing me miss you she's you were like introducing each other to bands as you do and uh, one of the ones she recommended i listen to was this lot and uh, actually this is her cd copy on nick six i want to talk about it and you know but you know i have a i have a digital mp3 purchase of this but uh we keep the cd hers because i think, I think this cds are long since out of print but anyway um the baby's three homosexual love ballads it's not a, not a brilliant album but it's a very enjoyable one and uh you know and it's sort of like God, it's what a punk album should be it's kind of angry youths being angry about society and aspects thereof so uh yeah homosexual love ballads follow baby's three worth worth checking out at least Okay, next up, going for some more vinyl. Okay, we've got an EP now. This is New England and the Earth Mother EP. There's the front. There's the back. It was at one point signed in green felt tip, but the felt tip's fading, unfortunately. Don't think there's anything on the inside. Hang on, yes, there is, yes, there is, yes, there is. Oh, I completely forgot about this. This is a poster of the band. And Here we have a fragment of a set list for my old band, Strange Institution. Um, yeah, and then they yeah, are signed by New England on the back. John, we love your belly. Uh, the shape of things to come. Ah, yes. Now, New England were a um, band out of the Isle of Wight. Kind of hard rock, kind of. We had that area where rock meets metal. Um, so, from right on the Isle of Wight, and a uh, four piece band. Came across these when um, I said by a bad strange institution, we uh, got given us, given us, we got phoned up by the police in Bristol, said, uh, we have a support slot do you want to do it we said yeah because you know we were the one of these bands we took every gig going ended up opening up for 
New England here. And uh, cracking band. Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, all they ever released was this EP, and then there was a there was a full length album. Slightly of which I forget, but I've got a copy in the racks behind behind me here somewhere. It will come out one day. And uh, yeah, but these guys were I don't know one of these bands that kind of showed a lot of promise, but then you know luck, judgment, they didn't get the breaks or whatever didn't quite follow through on the potential they had um, the cuts on here uh, you've got uh, so look 83, Earth Mother um, Hate which is one of my favourite New England songs it's uh, about trying to get some sleep when you're the taxi office downstairs kind of slamming doors and you know uh, people for arguing in the streets and hot summer nights etc and satellite um yeah uh the title track earth mother which is a uh, again cracking track um yeah not much really i can just i can be really sad about this bit of a collector's item this one i have seen copies going in record collector for 20 odd quid so uh and i don't know if it's ever had a digital reissue or maybe it has if they ever got around to reissue in their debut album on the uh, the CD or something, maybe these are bonus tracks, I don't know, but um, still a favourite of mine, I'll still drag it out periodically and give it a spin for my own listening pleasure, and um, yeah, good stuff, New England, The Earth Mother EP, uh, 19, 9, this would have been about 1990, 91, that was around about the time I was in Strange Institution, so uh, beyond that, I can't tell you, but yeah, good stuff. Okay, another CD now. Diabaterio by Private Government. There's the front. There's the back. And you'll pop this open. There's the disc, should you be interested. And here's the booklet, there's the front and back of it. And then it's lyrics and some uh, rather interesting sort of metal-y, black and white artwork type thing. I think there is a picture of the band on here somewhere. Uh -huh, here we go. Yeah, I think that's the band, although that does look a bit like Roy Orbison, but yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> now those of you that listen to my radio shows know that I am a big fan of world metal. Um, to the extent where I have a feature where I go around the world looking for obscure bands in obscure far flying corners of the planet, especially when um, there are places where you wouldn't normally expect to find metal bands. We put it this way, I have found and given airplay to a metalcore band from the Pacific Island of Guam. I am a big fan of the Botswana and black metal scene, of which, you know, my favourite bands are Crack Dust and Versed. There's, um, you know, uh, band, you know I play uh, bands of death metal from the Philippines. Um, uh, yeah, uh, prog metal from South Africa. Yeah. You know, one of the things I love about rock and metal, it's one of these genres where ever you go in the world, there's there's music, you know, um, Krampusnacht, band from band from Greenland, Greenland's only metal band, great outfit, yeah, and um, yeah, and during one of my routine kind of searches, I was looking around the Middle East, and contacted this lot. So this is private government, and they're based in Dubai. Now, um, 
a couple of the guys are Dubaian, Emiratians, Arabs. I don't know what you'll call the people that live in Dubai. I'm not sure what the, the uh, uh, national pronoun is. But anyway, a couple of the guys are from Dubai. A couple of the guys were Cypriots that were, yeah, from Cyprus that were working in Dubai. Met these guys in a probably non alcohol drinking metal bar, and uh, lo and behold, private government was born. They spend their time between Cyprus and, uh, and, and Dubai. Now, I say they do, lost contact with these guys. Um, happens so many bands, it's hard to keep up to date with all of them. But, um, you know, this album came out in 2009, and I did get an EP off these guys a couple of years later. As to whether they're still going, I don't know, but I do hope so, because they're great. Now, musically... Um, yeah, they're a kind of progressive metal band. Uh, you know, there's elements of sort of like Avenge uh, Sevenfold, Fate's Warning, um, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Opeth may be in here. It's it's that kind of ballpark, you know. It can be it makes me sort of quite subtle to extremely heavy in places. And all points in between. Um, now, what I like about this, and what I like about this whole world music in general, we are looking for bands all over the world, is there are certain parts on here that's got a very Arabic feel. Some of the guitars do that. It's almost got Arabic kind of scaling on the on the solo work. Some of the riffing is very reminiscent of kind of Middle Eastern folk music, and uh, you know, and more power to it. You know the because I love that kind of stuff. It shows um, a lot of innovation and depth that, you know, that rock and metal has that you know, other genres may not have. You know, I can't think of a genre of music that kind of can blend, you know, like Middle Eastern folk music with heavy metal with itself and still keep itself relevant, you know? Um, for example, you've got this whole Mongolian folk metal vibe that's going on at the moment. Uh, Bands like uh, Tanaga Cavalry and The Who. Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. This, as I say, this album is uh, Diabaterio um, by private government. Uh, Daxo Music is out on. Um, might have to do a bit of hunting, but you know, check it out. It's very, very interesting, and I quite like it. So, yeah, Diabaterio, uh, private government. Okay, sticking CD wise, and we're gonna stay and we're gonna go to Italy next. There's the front. This is Out for Dinner by Bipolar Sluts. There's the back. No, a little sticker from Ms. Larson on there. Who well, I think it's the... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, um... Yeah, this is the in my uh, booklet. Photographs by the aforementioned Ms. Larson. Um... I'll come to her no, in a minute because it's through Ms. Larson I know a lot of these Italian bands and uh, yeah there's lyrics there's um, you know the credits the pictures etc now I'll say this lot there I can't remember exactly where they're from um, somewhere in Italy at, uh, anyway now, I got to know these because, uh, again, one of my searching for international bands, I came across a band called Lunacy Box, or an uh, Italian goth band. Now, um, Lunacy Box released one album, it won our album of the year, one of the early ones, 2008, 2009, something like that. And um, they broke up not long afterwards. Now, I kept in touch with various members of the band, including the aforementioned Ms. Larson. And, um, now... She kind of decided to hang up being a, a sort of like a rock vocalist. Although, 
she still does make the occasional forays and guest appearances with people but you know her first love was photography and she uh, basically set herself up as a as a band photographer and become one of Italy's best she's worked with some pretty big names over there on the Italian music scene and every she comes across a band I've not heard of before she puts me in touch and one of the ones I'm glad she did was bipolar sluts now exactly where these guys are from I can't remember um, but I do know musically these guys are kind of uh, it's like glam rock that's the best way to describe it they're a little bit on the sleeve side they're um, you know hits of early Motley Crue uh, Quiet Riot um, Rat maybe yeah but it's given that kind of, uh, I don't know, certain Italian, not say je ne sais quoi, but that's French, given that kind of certain also Italian vibe and, you know, you know, this isn't Sleazy Nights out in LA, this is Sleazy Nights out in, in Lazio. <coughs> I think that's a place in Italy, isn't it? Anyway, um, it's a really good band. Um, Again, these were album of the year contenders. Uh, finished second or third in the overall final charts, I think. But um, overall, it's just great. There's tracks like uh, uh, I Can't Stand It, Keep Screaming, uh, Never Trust a Woman, Vodka and Lime, uh, Something to Kill the Pain. Everyone's a kind of bit of a classic rocker. Everyone makes you want to bang your head and jump around like a bastard. And... Uh, yeah, it's just really good stuff, and um, uh, it came out on the new model label, uh, label which still periodically sends me sends me stuff. So uh, yeah, bipolar sluts again, a band that I'm not sure what they're doing of at the moment, but uh, this is one album that I would recommend you check out and give a uh, once over to. Yeah, out for dinner, bipolar sluts. Good stuff indeed. Okay, more vinyl and more new over British heavy metal and something that ties into the uh, ACDC we opened the show with today. There's the front. This is In Flight Movies by Starfighters. There's the back. And no, this Starfighters isn't anything to do with Robert Calvert and the Starfighters, either the album that he did. Lucky Leap and the Starfighters, or one of his uh, names that went that the, his backing band went after, went under back in the back uh, back in the eighties. You know, there's nothing on the uh, no inner sleeves, no uh, gate folds, no uh, inserts or anything like that. Now, Starfighters band out of Birmingham, the mid and the Midlands area of Britain. Um, uh, a new over British heavy metalers uh, came through uh, about 1981 in the Ponos debut album. Uh, it's a corking record. I've got again one little sharp heel, no doubt on this on this on this series at some point. But that uh, a couple of yeah, you know, a corking record, a couple of tracks, and then um, this was their second album, their follow up, and I think the uh, the final one they released. I think they only did the two. And um, it's a damn fine record. Love the artwork, very nice air brushy, um, some kind of aeroplane exploding out of a television. You yeah, uh, <coughs> know, now, yeah, 1982, this one came out, and um, probably this lot are probably best known for. Uh, the rhythm guitarist on here, one Stevie Young, who was the cousin to, I think the cousin or nephew to uh, Angus and Malcolm for ACDC. And uh, first of all, um, when Malcolm was hospitalised in the uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, Steve, Stevie filled in for, for, for a tour or two. And then uh, when Malcolm Young sadly died, uh, Stevie Young's now the ACDC uh, rhythm guitarist. And... Um, Good call because uh, 
Stevie Young plays like Malcolm Young. He's just one of the seminal kind of riffing and uh, driving rhythm guitar players. Now, rhythm guitar playing, uh, you know, a lot of people, I'm a rhythm guitarist, and um, a lot of people will, you know, say that rhythm guitar is boring, especially young kiddies that want to be Jimi Hendrix or whoever, Satriani, whoever the latest flash guitar hero of the ages. Um, but there's a skill to rhythm guitaring that uh, takes some doing because basically the rhythm guitar is the piece of music is the uh, part of the back of a, of a rock or metal band that holds the rhythm section of the drums and the bass oh uh to tightly in with the uh, lead guitar and the vocals and it's quite often it's the rhythm guitar that leads that leads the riff it's the um yeah it's, it's your it's the rhythm guitar that thickens the sound and gives it the volume and um you know, there's a, it's a kind of bit of a dark art being a damn good rhythm guitar player. The one that I've never really mastered, but people like Stevie Young really does. It, which basically, what I'm trying to come around to saying is, it gives the Starfighters, because of, um, you know, it gives them a kind of really thick sound. You know, they do sound, I've met Hand on Heart, there is a strong ACDC vibe running through this album, running through the Starfighter sound in general. Um, but it's not derivative, it's not kind of uh, them trying to be ACDC, it's obviously the influence coming through, but they do their own things on top of it. And overall, this is a cracking album. Um, the first side especially is really strong. Uh, from the opening Working Girl, Running for the Gun, which is... Uh, oh, is that my favourite Starfighters cut? There's Cat Blues on the first album, and there's also the side one closure on this Gallows Dancer, which is corking songs. B-side, I'm your nightmare, here's looking at you, hot shot, run away. All pretty good stuff. Um, I can't remember, apart from uh, uh, Stevie Young, I can't remember which of the other five members of the band do exactly what. I know they've got a uh, sort of lead guitarist and the vocalist and the drummer and the bassist, but as to, um, I think I might have three guitarists on this actually. But anyway, as to who does what, Lord knows. Um, a band I've never seen live, but... I've been a admirer from afar for ages. As far as I'm aware, both their albums have fairly recently had CD re reissues. So getting hold of a copy shouldn't be that hard, and I hastily recommend that you do. Either this one, In Flight Movie, or their debut album, which is just called Starfighters. Yeah, great band, well worth checking out. Okay, next up, we're going to have something that's a little bit, going to look a little bit different. Here we are, this is Magnum Into the Valley of the Moon King. There's the front. And there's the back. Now, I know that probably some of you out there are saying, well hang on, I've got that particular Magnum album on my racks and it looks nothing like this. Well it wouldn't because... Uh, <coughs> Uh, no, this isn't a dodgy pirate. If you read along the top there, this is a advanced um, pre-release promo copy, um, which obviously they package different from uh, the uh, yeah the official release ones because uh, yeah not I would never do it, but there have been some unsurplus uh, DJs that would get their promo through and try and sell them on in advance at to bands fans at highly inflated prices. Naughty people. So consequently, rather than the standard packaging, which I've no idea what it looks like, because I've only ever owned this copy, you've got the you know, promo thing on the top, and you've got a press release verb written down there. Um, it basically goes on to the, uh, um, yeah, following the Princess Alice and the Broken Arrow album, and the finishing of their tour, they decided to go into the studio, because they'd already written some ideas. Um, yeah. Uh, we will have three different versions uh, top quality dual case, uh, digipack and bonus DVD and a 2LP vinyl fold out and uh, yeah, they got tours coming up which 
I'm really glad to say I saw him on this tour. Absolutely brilliant. And okay, so let's talk about the album. It's uh, my opinion. This is uh, one of those highlight albums. This is one of the ones that Magnum. It's one. Of, it's Magnum at their peak. I like Magnum Full Stop, although they have done some albums like Good Night, uh, Goodbye LA, and uh, Sleepwalk, which I found very disappointing. Um, yeah, I will say they're a band that's never let me down because, in my opinion, on a couple of occasions they have. But overall, they do tend to, when they do let me down, they tend to apologise and still ca and still capable of bringing stuff out like this. Now, um, like I said. This, in my opinion, along with the likes of Storyteller's Night, uh, probably Chase the Dragon as well, and Vigilante, definitely up in my top four or five Magnum albums. Um, again, you can always tell with me with a band if it's really like, because, you know, I listen to stuff of pleasure and I listen to stuff of business. When I say business, I mean it's when I'm preparing radio shows and I fancy some Magnum or, you know, I haven't played anything off this album for a while, I'll drag it out and give it a listen. But then, when I say for pleasure, it's when I'm sitting around the fancy listening to some music in, uh, uh, yeah, late at night or while I'm doing some other some paperwork and that. It's what I reach for. And this is one of the Magnum albums I always reach for. This is a corker. Um, one of the last albums to feature Mike Steinway on keyboards. Uh, line-up, of course, is Tony Clark on guitar, Rob Catley vocals, the aforementioned Mike Steinway on keys, Or someone on bass, my glasses, even with my glasses, I can't read this small, some of small writing. Uh, Henry James on drums? Anyway, someone Mr. James on drums. Um, basically, cracking album, every member on this band performs to perfection. Um, and then you got the cuts. Uh, all of my bridge, it's not a weak track on here to be honest with you. Um, uh, where are we? The Moon uh, highlights include the Moon King, no one knows its name. Um, uh, Blood on your bog wire thorns, um, cry to yourself, and then the poisson resistance on this is uh, a face in the crowd. A song that is one of the most moving pieces of music any rock band has ever recorded. And I don't mean that in a bad way or in a kind of patronising, overreaching way. It's just brilliant. Now, as I said, I saw Magnum on this tour and they did a face in the crowd as part of the set. And it was one of those magical moments that you can only get at live live concerts it rung it plucked the heartstrings of everybody in the crowd the crowd were in tears you know great big old greasy bikers having a bit of a damp high moment the band were in tears bob catley could hardly sing because he's because he was lumping up and it was just a magical, magical moment that sends shivers down my, fighters, by my spine even thinking about it. The studio version on here does it to me as well. That's what I'm feeling a bit, ah, yes, talking about it. But, yeah, Magnum, Into the Valley of the Moon King. What an album. What an album. Okay, a bit of vinyl, and this one's going to take a bit of unpacking. This is Hawkwind Xenon Codex. Now, I'll say a bit of unpacking because it starts off with there's the front and there's the back. But like some Hawkwind albums, it does this. I'll whip that out and come back to that in a minute. You've got this massive, great big fold-out triangular artwork thing there. If 
flip it around the back. All that. Then, the oven itself is quite remarkable. There we are, GWR Records, standard black vinyl pressing. But also in here, um, I've got this, which didn't come with the album. <coughs> This is the uh, 1988 tour program, which bizarrely advertises one of Dave Brock's solo albums on the back, rather than the Hawkwind album. Yeah, no wonder several members of the band left shortly after this tour. Yeah, where was it? Um, yeah, 9th of April, that would have been. 9th of April there, Bristol. And also on here, yeah, this is a typical tour program you've got. So I'll put it, keep this tour program in this one because it's got the lyrics to some of the songs on it. And um, it folds out. You've got the Hawkwind Monopoly type game. Get Hawkwind to. Uh, the Stonehenge Free Festival, dodging riot police and bad drugs and uh, dodgy food and van breakdowns and etc. And you've also got a sheet of stickers which includes the um, playing tokens for the game. Oh, really? Well, I miss the days when bands would do all the, would put all the work into the packaging, etc. Now, the Xenon Codex by Hawkwind, um, in my opinion, the last ever truly great Hawkwind album. Um, well, it's not truly great. It's, you know, it's not brilliant. But the last Hawkwind album I brought, played, and thoroughly enjoyed. The follow-up to this Space Bandits disappointed and then they've done nothing since. They went into that kind of new rave era which really made me want to vomit and um, put me off the band for about 30 years. And then listening to some of the stuff they've released after that in hindsight yeah, there's a couple of albums that got moments like Love in Space, etc. But overall it's kind of just, yeah, no, it's not Hawkwind. It's not, the, the spirit's gone. Yeah, they may sound a bit hippie and trippy and Dave Brock's there on vocals, but, you know, they no longer excite me, put it that way. But this album still excites me. This is one album I can put on and still go, yeah. Um, the last one to feature Hugh Lloyd Langton and Danny Thompson on guitar and drums, respectively. Uh, cuts on here include, um, I think this is the last one to feature Harvey Bainbridge as well. I think Bainbridge left after this. Um, well, I don't know, I have to drag out Space Bandits and have a look. But anyway, um, on here you've got uh, cuts like The War I Survived, which is... Uh, about Kurt Vonnegut's novel Slaughterhouse Five, um, Wastelands Asleep, Lost Chronicles, Tides, Heads, which uh, lovely piece of sort of like bouncy synth work, um, Sword of the East, Good Evening, it's overall just a pretty strong album. Um, yeah, saw them on the tour. One of the last times I saw the real Hawk, well, it was probably the last time I saw Real Hawk, I went and saw them on the Space Bandits tour and. Yeah, I didn't exactly walk out, but mm, that's what kind of killed me from seeing Hawkwind live until a few years ago, and what I've seen since hasn't really encouraged me to go back. Sorry, guys, you've lost it for me. But, never mind, you left behind virtually everything you released up to and including this album, um, which I still do rate, love, cherish, play regularly, and enjoy to the max. Yeah, um, not the best Hawkwind album, 
Um, but compared with what came after it, by far not the worst. Xenon Codex 1988. Recommended ish. Okay, next up, bit of CD. Get this angled right. There we are. BRMC Black Rebel Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. There's the front. There's the back. And here's the booklet. Band pictures. Don't think there's lyrics in here. No, it's just lots and lots of band photos. Right, now. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. I'll admit they're a band I don't know that much about. I've got a few albums by them. But, you know, <coughs> can't tell you, I don't even know where they're from. I think they're Yanks or Canadians, one of the two. But what I do know is, I'm sitting here talking about these records now, both the future, both the present ones and the past ones, thanks to these guys. These guys got me back into music. Um, now, come the 1990s, you know, I'd done all the my, my favourite stuff, you know, the kind of neo prog, the new over British heavy metal. I love the punk stuff that was coming through. Late eighties, it began to kind of become kind of. I don't know. The rock scene became a divided scene, not helped by bands like Metallica slagging off anyone that wasn't Metallica, um, not helped by magazines like Kerrang trying to polarise people. If you listen to Motley Crue, you can't listen to Slayer. Well, screw you, Kerrang. I've got albums by both and enjoy them both. So, but it got that kind of, you know, and you would end up going, and after that, you'd go to kind of rock clubs and, you know, gigs. And if you're wearing the wrong T-shirt, you'll get, if you're looking in or, you know, uh, I don't know. It kind of poisoned the scene to me. And so, consequently, I took less and less interest in it. Uh, then, then along came grunge, which I uh, weren't really a fan of. Don't mind some of it, but you know, Nirvana really got on my goat. Britpop, same the kind of thing. Although, you know, Britpop, I'm getting back into it. I'm getting to listen to it more in retrospect and appreciate it more now than I did back then. Especially bands like Pulp and Supergrass and Blur, etc. And then, you know, but, but so basically I retreated back into my little bubble of 1985 and to me, the 90s, musically, didn't happen. Then, I was sharing a house with a guy called James at the time. And as he was his one, because, yeah, he was a few years younger than me, he was in the kind of, yeah, Len at Trendy Vans, you know, he used to like watching Late with Jules Holland. Oh, I didn't mind it. I could sit there and you know, I could have a coffee and a cider or something and we would kind of entertain each other if I slag off bands I didn't like or vice versa. And occasionally they'll drag out a ZZ Top or a, you know, a classic band to kind of do a couple of numbers. But anyway, I'm watching this particular episode of Lake with Jules Holland and on walked Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and played a track called Whatever Happened to My Rock and Roll Open Brackets Punk Song. And my jaw hit the floor, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, do they still do music like this? This was a, ba a modern band, a young band, sounding like Blue Cheer. Um, but in a contemporary way, this was kind of all the kind of angry metal and punk, yeah, especially from the state side, uh, even aspects of grunge thrown in. Um, yes, so balls down into this perfect four and a half minute rock song um it, it's one of those cases i mentioned it if i've done it a few times in the past listen to tommy vance or fluff freeman on the radio or john peel 
but this happened that was on the friday night saturday morning i'm down the vocal virgin megastore and i'm buying this uh it was their debut album one that came out at the time and you know i've got a few other albums by them i haven't collected everything they've got because i found as i listen to them more they're a bit of a patchy band they can flip between moments of sheer brilliance and moments of meh but overall i still got a soft spot for these guys purely because um they encouraged me to open my eyes and listen to more music more contemporary music and um led on to basically so the scenes what became me doing the radio shows and uh yeah this blog card it's, it's, it's vlogging that's this this day so yeah when was this come out 1998 i think it was or 1999 might have even been 2000 i don't know my glasses aren't powerful enough and it's not even stronger pair of glasses but anyway um this is a great album overall uh tracks like the aforementioned whatever out to my rock and roll still my favorite song by these guys for personal reasons uh but then you've got red eyes and tears uh rifles um salvation spread your love it's a banging record band are on form production is kind of good enough to get a, get a really good mix but left alone enough to keep it roaring in your face and overall good stuff yeah bmrc black river motorcycle club these are not the last one and i've only got about two minutes to do this one in so i'll fly through it here we go it's metallica's kill them all there's the front there's the back in a sleeve of metallica doing metallica stuff there's the lyrics and there we are it's an original music for nations pressing 1983. now metallica I've got to admit, hand on heart, I can't stand Metallica. <coughs> Not nowadays anyway. Um, I never was a massive fan. Although their first three albums, this one, Ride the Lightning, Kill Em All, I got respect for because, yeah, they're important in the kind of development of thrash metal. And they're, they're, they're not bad in a kind of naive, kind of, uh, sort of like kids playing heavy metal kind of vein. The lyrics, lyrically, you know, none of these guys are particularly good lyricists, you know, um, despite that they believe that they are now, they're not, um, you know, it's a Steve Harris style of lyric writing, it's, um, you know, the music's pretty good, it's in fast, it's intense, it's naive, you know, and the first three albums I like, this one, probably the best of the three, it's the rawest, it's the naivest, it's the uh, best thing they've done. Now, I would say Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning are pretty cool as well. However, then they started getting up their own backsides, in my opinion, releasing really shit cover versions of songs that I love and pretending they're better than the originals. I'm thinking of you, people that do uh, budgie numbers, etc. <sighs> Crash course in brain surgery makes me want to shoot these guys. Then the Justice for All album, with its piss poor production, and then the Black album, which to me is not a classic. It sounds a bit like a, a band that want to be Queen's Reich and can't quite can't quite cut the jib. Feel free to disagree with me. Hate comments as always in the uh, uh, down in the comments. Oh, they're on YouTube, they're on Facebook, but it's my personal opinion. And if you can listen to kind of you know uh, post Cliff Burton. May you rest in peace, uh, Metallica, and get something from it. Good luck to you. I can't. Maybe you can tell me where I'm going wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, Metallica, kill them all. The best Metallica album. And one of the only three you should really listen to, in my opinion. So that's it for this week. I want to say thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, remember, links to all the radio shows are down there. As is uh, the comments you can put down there, like and subscribe, etc. It's down there on uh, YouTube, over there on Facebook. So until next week, peeps, I love every single last one of you, and I'm out of here. Bye.